Okay, the recording has started. So welcome everybody again. And uh, we're going to start off with some announcements from anybody who has some. And I'm sure, Neil, you probably do, but I don't know if others do too. Sure, I'm happy to start. Um, I want to let people know, I think I'm caught up. Well, I may have to go back uh, a few months to get fully caught up, but a lot of the recordings from these meetings are on a playlist. So I pasted the URL for this. It's in the Sakai channel. There's, I also post them to the Aperio channel and create a playlist there. So um, there's one of the playlists. I thought people might want to know that in case you go back and look at older recordings that people have done because they're still, you know, relevant or focused things. So it might be worth saying an announcement on that. Um, uh, so it has, like, for example, um, this is how you have testing update, the QA discussion, career to use cases, the Zerti presentation, lessons, birds of others. So it has all those, those presentations in there. Um, and uh, the thing I want to mention is that we have a Sakai skin contest. Um, it's $400 in prize money. There's a webinar how to do. Uh, to do skin, you know, they've um, been updating the documentation to get it current so they can do documentation this and uh, explain how to um, make changes to the Sakai 11 skin and also pro we'll provide more details on the skin contest. We should have a few things decided by next week. So if you jump onto that, um, uh, you can learn a lot and that should be a lot of fun. Um, Sakai 11, the gradebook uh, project has been merged into. Um, Let's see, into the experimental on nightly. So there's now some Jeff uh, Pat had a really nice um, detailed. Let me see if I can find that. Maybe I can probably link to it that I can paste in here um, from Jeff. Let's see. I knew he did. Um, I'll need to find that email and send a link because he had a really detailed message explaining where they are with the group project, um, where the issues are, if people want to track what issues are still open, which which um, features they've completed, which features they're still working on. So all that information is now out there, and we can start kind of playing around and, and uh, uh, with the with the group NG, the new spreadsheet gradebook. Um, so those are the main things. Let me think if there's anything else off the top of my head. Um, I think that I think that's all that comes to me uh, at the moment. Uh, there might be some updates from some of the other project leads um, as well. Oh, and I guess um, no, I think that covers covers a lot. Thanks, Neil. Looks like uh, Leah Bergman chatted that if anybody would like to grab Dayton's code for the email notification in Samago, she pasted the URL into the chat, and I will add that to uh, the Etherpad as well. Thanks, Leah. And does anybody else have any updates you'd like Hi, to share? Hi, this is Wilma. I just have a quick update on the virtual conference. I just wanted to remind everybody that um, if you haven't registered and you'd like to, um, you might want to go ahead and hurry up and register because the first 200 people get t-shirts and lunch coupons. So um, it's an incentive to get your registration in early. Um, the cutoff for that is October 14th. So um, if you're thinking about registering, again, you might want to do it pretty soon. And um, we've got a lot of great proposals that have come in. We should have the schedule, um, the program finalized sometime I'm hoping by next week. So as soon as that schedule is final, we'll we'll send out an announcement, and you guys can take a look and see uh, what's what's coming up. But so far, in looking over the proposals, there's a lot of really great sessions. So I encourage you guys to attend. Thanks, Wa. Um, is there a registration deadline? You can register at any point up to the day before, but okay. if you want to get the promo items, you need to be within um, the first 200, and it needs to be before October 14th because we have to send them out in the mail. So we need a cutoff right. date for the promo. But other than that, if you if you don't care about the promo items, you can register up until the day before. Okay, great. Thank you. Anybody else have any announcements to make? 
Terry is wondering, Wilma, how many are registered at this point? If you remember. So Wilma says 85 have registered so far. So that's a good start. And um, I know it registered yet, but I intend to. So um, we'll be getting to that very soon. <laughs> Okay, so we are um, happy to welcome Joe Lee Tingen from Duke University, who is going to give us a warp wire demo. And so, Joe Lee, I am going to give you presenter privileges. I think I just did that. Yep. And um, I will let you get set up here and um, go ahead with your demo. Great. Can you hear me? Yes. Fantastic. Um, I would like to do a live demo. I'm going to bring up my presentation, um, which has screenshots. But if, if possible, I'm going to try to go into warp wire and see how well that works. Um, I sent a link out earlier to the presentation we did at the conference, which has a lot of historical information. I'm going to go over some brief things about that, about being on, on Kaltura and moving away from that. But I'd like to focus more just on the tool and how it works because we've actually had some new features added since June. So I want to make sure you know about those if you went to the presentation back in, in, in June. So as I said, we haven't always been on WarpWire. We've only been on WarpWire since January, so not even a full year yet. Um, we were originally on Kaltura, which was just available through Sakai. We were using the media gallery tool in Sakai. Um, and you know, one of the specific use cases that was a little bit tricky for us in terms of just having access to a video delivery tool through Sakai was that that's where the permissions, permissions and access were happening. Um, and so we had a streaming e-reserves pilot that started and we had to do some kind of dancing around in Sakai to make that happen because our librarians don't have admin access to Sakai or access to rosters. So um, in order to make that happen, we were creating sites for them um, and having to add multiple rosters to those sites to, to deliver those videos. Um, and we handled that a little bit differently with WarpWire, so that solved one problem for us. Um, and, you know, part of that is because uh, of the way WarpWire works, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so that's one of the areas of flexibility that we that we were looking for. Um, I think we felt like that if you've used Kaltura before, you, you know what the collections, how the collections work, and we felt like we wanted a little bit more flexibility with that. Um, and and that so that was a little bit of a pain point for people in terms of workflow, um, and also we we were using Kaltura and that was completely hosted off campus, and if we if it looked like we were going to go over um, our media allocation, that could be expensive. So um, Warpwire is hosted at Duke, um, so we don't we've sort of eliminated that that overages issue. Um, we do have asset level security. This is something that was really important to OIT um, and may maybe others too. It just had not come across the teaching and learning side of things. Um, to be able to take a single asset and send someone a link, and if they can authenticate, they can access just that, that piece, just that one asset. Um, and we were successful with that with WarpWire. Um, it all, we also have a standalone tool to WarpWire. We have it integrated in, in Sakai through LTI. But we also have a, a standalone warp wire that I'll, I'll show you hopefully here in a minute. Um, and you remember me talking about the access issue before with Sakai and just that being the entry point. Warp wire uses um, our toolkits software, which is based on Grouper, built on Grouper. And so all of the rosters and all of the groups that are created through um, project sites in Sakai or other groups that have been created, you can just search for those groups and toolkits and provide access. So um, that is also very useful. It's really useful for our library use case. So they can just go in and create a library. And if they need to share it with three different rosters, they search for the rosters and they add those. And I'll show you that in a minute. And it's, it's a really clean, simple interface. 
Um, this, this is just some general information about Warpwire that you can get off their website, but I thought it would be helpful to have it here in the slides for you to refer to later uh, about file types and um, the upload limit. It's pretty generous. Kelly, yes. I'm going to interrupt you for a minute because if you do have slides right now, I, we are not seeing them. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Um, so you need to uh, either share your desktop or other slides. All right, let me button. go back to blue, big blue button. Oh, sorry about that. Okay. I clicked share desktop and full screen. So let me know when you see it. We see your screen now. Yay. So I haven't gotten very far. Okay. So, good. <laughs> the good news is, is I'm only on slide four and the first one was warp wire at Duke. Um, so I'll back up just a tiny bit here. Uh, still see it? Yes. Okay, good. All right, so I talked about the history um, and being on the Kaltura and our, what, how we selected warp wire. I'll, since I'm already back on the slide, I'll mention one thing about this. Um, the, we've been working really closely with the developers. It's a, it's a team of three. They've recently hired a support person and um, they were the original developers of VoiceThread. And so they sold VoiceThread and, and actually came to Duke and said, we wanna, we wanna develop a new tool what what kind of tool would you be interested in? What are you looking for? And that's when we started talking about um, some of our issues with uh, video delivery and, and kind of the things that were on our wish list for that. Here's where I was when Patricia told me you couldn't see my screen. <laughs> um, the 10 gigabyte file upload limit, the different files supported. Um, you'll notice in the interface there's nowhere to download files and that's because we don't want Warpwire to be a place where people store files. Um, we want it to be a way that they're just publishing files and making them available to people um, and keeping their originals backed up somewhere else. Um, at the moment, we don't we do have guest account access through our toolkit software that we can, you know, get, add guests through Sakai when we access that software, but not through Warpwire at the moment. So we're working on that. That's kind of a, a, a uh, high on the list of, of things to come in the near future. And of course, we have it available in Sakai through LTI. So this is just a screenshot of, of what it looks like when you see a thumbnail in uh, Warpwire. On the left, you see the lock. And then if you can authenticate, it turns into the play button. And that's just one of their visual cues about the security piece of it. So I'm going to go over here to Warpwire itself, you can still see me, right? Yes. Great. Okay, so I just logged into Warpwire. I'm, I'm already logged in, so it didn't prompt me for my credentials. Normally it would. Um, and this is where you land at first when you go into Warpwire, you land in your media libraries. Um, you can create a new library, sort, you can search. Um, you'll see at the top, there's media libraries, which is where I'm at right now. My media, if I click on that, I see all the media across all the libraries just in single asset list. And then shared with me, when someone shares a single asset with you, it doesn't automatically go into a library. It just shows up under this shared with me link. So, let me go into one of my libraries so I can show you some of the options that are available. You'll see I can add media. And when I do that, I have two options, upload files from your computer. And we talked about the upload limit and the file types. But you can also capture from webcam or camera. And this, is, this was a big deal for us because this was available through Kaltura. And people were using it. They were using it in the languages and they're using it um, in our, um, we have four online programs in nursing and, and they were using it there too for presentations. So that was really important to us. You can see what, what that looks like. Um, so that was, that was a big deal for us in terms of functionality and wasn't something that was available right out of the gate with the software. It came shortly after. 
Um, under the library options at the library level, you can share with the users and groups like I talked about earlier. Um, you, this used to be two different screens and they've recently made this a single, all these options available on a single screen. Um, we have three options in terms of sharing. You can do everyone on the web, so you can make it public. You can just do uh, share with all of Duke, um, Duke users that have NetIDs that can authenticate through NetID at Duke. That was a, a wish list from our, uh, something from our library, a use case that they had that needed to get in there in terms of sharing. And then of course you have sharing with users and groups. And when you start to search for sharing with users and groups, you'll see that this it hasn't always worked this way, but two columns um, pop up and one column has the list of users that meet my criteria and on the left has the groups that meet my criteria. And a lot of those are just some of my ad hoc groups from Sakai project sites. But let me do um, search for what would be more like a roster. And so you'll see that, do this. These are the groups that are pre-populated in our toolkits tool. Um, those are our rosters that are available to share with. So this is how the library goes in and says, I need to share the, you know, these, these films with three different language classes, and this is how they would share them. So we, Something that, yes. We, got a, we have a couple of questions relevant to this screen. Um, the okay. first one, was could you use the everyone on the web option for guest access that's that's what we're doing now okay. yes yeah and that's, you, a, that's our workaround okay and so the follow-up to that was so you can share with people groups and rosters i guess rosters are groups too yes just like in Sky. okay yes rosters are seen as groups okay thank you yeah. You're welcome. And, sir, and um, something that's relatively new uh, to this screen in terms of sharing is you'll see under the, the um, sharing with users and groups um, piece, there's a, a text at the bottom that says, in addition to authorized members, that really just means the owner. <laughs> this media is shared with Michael Green, that's my colleague, and three other users. And when you click this edit permissions link, this gives you the option to um, change um, someone's permissions. And this is how, if, if I were leaving the university, and I'm not, but if I were, I could turn my uh, library over to Elise, or I could just make her a co-admin. Um, and if I did that, she would be able to remove me um, as an admin. But this is where you would just completely transfer ownership or um, just make someone also an administrator of a library. And this happens also with that use case that we talked about earlier with the e-reserves. More than one person needs to manage that. Um, and this is how they do it now. And this is the, so we, yes. Oh, Go ahead. I just wanted to mention, this is at the library level. We have permissions at the asset level, but they don't quite look like this. And you change owner in a different way. And I'll demonstrate that later. Okay. Um, Tejan has a question. Is that menu um, a multi-select menu? Yes. The, the search users and groups? Right. Let me go back. And when you do it, each one turns green and that's the prompt that you've selected. And in addition, you could go down and see at the bottom the authorized members. And then you can also go to the edit permissions and see from there. Thank you. You're welcome. So that was at the library level. Let me go back in. Let's go also to media library info. There's only two areas here at the library level. This is where you can change the title of your library. You can provide a description. This is also where, um, if you're using your WorkWire with a Sakai site and you've added the WorkWire tool to your Sakai site and it's created a library for you, at, when it does that, by default, only the owner, which is the instructor, has the ability to 
add content. Um, and if you wanted it to be a place where students could also share a video, you would check this box that says users with access can add media to this library. This is also where you can view analytics um, and delete the media library. Originally, we didn't have um, delete media library or delete assets. And if you noticed, when I was looking at all of my libraries, when we set up Warpwire, all these groups came in um, that were from toolkits that were from uh, Sakai sites. And of course, people like me have a million of those. So we really were excited about being able to delete some of those. Um, and that's also true with other support staff as well. Um, View Analytics was available in June, and I know we probably talked about that at the conference. Um, this library has, an, has one asset, so it, this is not a good example. Um, I think there's a screenshot in the presentation of, of you know, something that has a little bit more information. I just wanted you to see the types of ways that you could report. You can obviously select a date range um, and then report on, on different aspects of the analytics. And also export to CSV, which is nice. Hey, Jolie. Yes. I just wanted to point out that I can see on your desktop that you have 6% by left, and I don't know if you want to plug in. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know, Tricia. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm pretty much, I, I'm almost done, actually, with the presentation. Um, I think I've covered most aspects of, of WorkWire. Um, I included some links for you at the end of the presentation, which are um, links to information about Grouper, the WorkWire site, um, our site for WorkWire, and uh, the conference presentation, in case you wanted to go back and refer to that. Um, but I, one other, there's only one other piece that I need to go into, and that's the Sakai piece. So I'll go ahead and do that. Um, this is one of our many WorkWire testing sites. Um, you'll see that I've added the tool um, in, in Sakai, and I just did that through edit tools like any other LTI tool that's installed at the system level. Um, and it's really just, it's the same interface as um, what we were just looking at in standalone, and it behaves the same way. The only difference with Sakai um, is in addition to having the tool at the menu level and being able to navigate your libraries this way, we also have it installed in the CK editor. So I'm just in site information display, I've clicked edit, and here you'll see in our, in our list of icons here at the top, there's a blue W, which looks a lot like the WordPress W, we've told them. And um, when you click on that, you get a pop-up screen. This is really just responsive design from from WarpWire, um, and it pops up in this size, and you can select the asset that you would like to plug into this content area. Um, you can select multiple assets. Um, I'm only going to select one right now, but and it changes here at the bottom, saying how many you've selected. And when you click Insert, it puts it into your your content. And of course, the CK editor is available everywhere. But this was this was so we could reach parity with Kaltura the Kaltura functionality. So that's it. Um, let me know if you have questions. I, I'm sorry I haven't been able to um, go back to the big blue button screen and see the chat. That's okay. I've been, I've been uh, chiming in with the questions that have come across so far. Um, so, well, thank you, Jolie. That's really interesting. And I'm curious to know what you see as the main advantages of Warpwire over Kaltura, since we're Kaltura users, so I'm really interested in, in what you see as the main advantages. I think um, having the standalone tool is an advantage um, because it's, you know, it, it allows for another entry point to video publishing. Um, you don't, ha you're not, you don't, you're not, you know, married to Sakai to access the tool. And I know other schools have used Kaltura um, standalone as well. So we were, you know, we probably could have done that. I don't know the reasons behind not doing that. Um, so, but for us, that was an advantage. Um, 
we've got a lot of flexibility in using uh, toolkits with um, with Warpwire. Um, so that was, you know, a design. Is, is toolkit a separate system? Yes, toolkits was developed at Duke, and um, but it's based on um, on Grouper, and I've put some information about that in at the uh, in the last slide. Um, Grouper is just a way for you to create groups and share those groups across multiple tools. Um, so if the group changes, it changes across, you know, the, the, the access changes across all of those tools. So you're managing your user group in one place. Gotcha. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah, I can talk about that some other time, although it would probably okay. be better for, for um, our developer to, to talk about that. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. We have another question here. Uh, who Dave Eveland is wondering how you manage access to content term over term uh, when the same course is taught semester after semester. How does the content get replicated or does it become accessible? Right. Um, you can copy to another media library. Um, you could go back to um, a media library and share uh, with a new roster because all the new rosters are available. Um, it is it is a little bit of an issue that you know you create a library and it takes the name of that specific semester and that specific roster and yet it's the same content but you can copy um, content to another media library great um, Dave is also um, asking if four require also metrics on video views and I believe I saw that it does yeah that that's in the analytics piece um, under the library yeah media views yeah okay that's great really nice so this is widely used uh, at Duke I assume it's pretty um, probably adopted yes uh, I think we have currently 75 sites using it I think that's the latest data we were able to um, search. We, we searched for and found, um, and that's just, you know, I'm going to say it's, come, it's two semesters because we, we did have it available in spring, but we were still running Kaltura in the spring. So um, there were probably yeah. more takers this fall once Kaltura went away <laughs> than, right. than last spring. So Right. And we have a question. Uh, Brenda wonders, you can rename the library so it isn't specific to a particular term. Yeah, you could. Okay. And can you stagger the release of videos? In other words, can you set release dates and times? Not yet. That is something that we've discussed. Okay. But you know, if you if you depending on how deliver you're delivering your content in Sakai, I talked to a faculty member about this recently. There are so many tools in Sakai that let you do that. So if like if you're usually using the lessons tool or you know it, linking to videos inside of um, the resources area or some other place you know we have lots of other tools in Sakai that do allow for that so that you could accomplish that now just using Sakai and right. delivering your, your content that way but mm -hmm. it, it would be something desirable to have as a feature in more prior. Yeah, Dave mentions also lessons that capability of having a release date. So that's another way to manage it. Well, thank you, Sally. That was really um, a nice demo, and we really appreciate you taking the time to share your work with us. You're welcome. Any other questions from, from our attendees? I don't know exactly how you stop screen sharing, but um, you, if you want to uh, try to turn that off, that there you go. Excellent. Okay, great. And Thank I will have my power supply now. <laughs> Thank you, Trisha, for right. noticing that. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, 
So one thing I forgot to um, talk about was a JIRA of the week. And I was looking back through previous meetings and noticed that that uh, SAM 2043 was at least on the agenda. And I don't know how deeply it was discussed. And I don't see Laura Geckler on call, but she had sent email around um, asking about it. Um, so I thought we would um, take some time to take a look at that. And I've pasted the link to that Jira in the chat. So if folks could go ahead and click on that and um, we can take a minute to talk about it. So this Jira is in Samago and it's about providing control over when, when scores are sent to the grade book. So that's an interesting feature request. And the description says we have a faculty request for greater control of gradebook integration um, around releasing scores to the gradebook. Um, there are a couple of similar unresolved JIRA tickets around that. Um, and currently, grades are sent immediately, regardless of feedback settings. That's true. Uh, so that is a way for students to get information about their assessment scores without um, even before the feedback has been released. Um, and so it's suggested in this JIRA that one approach might be to adopt the assignments functionality um, where you can opt to send assignment scores to gradebook. A gradebook item gets created immediately, but a score is not sent until the instructor, ugh, instructor releases it to the students. And so perhaps Samago could have a similar integration. And, oh, okay. Laura comments that it was discussed favorably on September 9th. So I don't know if any, I obviously was not on that call. Um, and I don't know if any of you were and have anything to add to that. Um. It looks like the word favorably is like has a strike through on it or something. Oh, it was just discussed. <laughs> okay, it was discussed and I don't know what what right. what came up about it. it. Yeah. Um, so anybody have any reactions to this Jira? I mean, one thing is that we talked about, we've been talking about harmonizing and improving terminology in Sakai. This seems like it might be harmonizing and improving workflow, uh, you know, where things behave yeah. in one tool one way and in a different yeah. tool a different way. It seems like it would be nice to be a little more. Um, I think that it, I, I mean, I'm in a bad position that I don't, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't use Sakai that much, right? I use it for QA purposes, but I'm not in a teaching and learning environment. So I don't know if adding in, for example, that release um, option makes assignments more difficult to use, or if people find that very straightforward, how to release grades from assignments, and indeed, therefore, having that extra control would be useful. So there's always that ad, that issue of adding complexity onto a tool versus um, you know, its ease of use. True. And um, let's see, I probably should be capping some notes around this. Uh, but I completely agree that um, workflows, there should be some harmonizing of that among tools. Um, let me just make a note about that. Um, I think one thing that I've heard um, from a lot of faculty about the assessment score being sent immediately is if it's a test where there are manually graded items, um, the student will get a partial score, bef you know, excluding the ones that, that, that haven't been graded yet. So then they get a, another score later, um, which can be confusing to the student. Absolutely. We've heard that too. And um, it does seem kind of a disconnect if you have set either no feedback or feedback on a date that the grade book would not honor that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
So it, to me, it should. And because um, faculty aren't going to intuitively understand that it doesn't, I think they would expect that it would. The grade book would honor the settings in Samago for releasing grades. So I would like to sorry, encourage, other... sorry, go ahead. I was say one other thing, uh, we'll see. Um, yeah, one other thing in terms of like issues like this is like even if the group says, yeah, we want this to happen, the other discussion we haven't had is, well, then how, how do we make it happen, right? There's not always resources in the community available to work on these things. So um, I will do a, a 10 second pitch for farm the funding and resource model we're working on that's I think one of the use cases we might look at is you know how do we how do we get um, some momentum around uh, resource sharing you know uh, maybe a group of institutions get together and put a bounty on an issue and say we can pay X amount of dollars to get this this one done and send, have somebody pick it up something like that so we're, we're just kind of exploring that we don't have a process yet but I think that's the other other step of these kinds of feature requests is um, you know, when it's a bug, it can be pretty clear. Resources in the community. When it's a feature, it's it's not as a, uh, it's not as clear. Right. Yeah. Um. I mean, that's a really important point. We don't really have a process yet for you know things that we discuss, getting them some attention in terms of. Um, getting resources to actually work on them and prioritizing what should be worked on. Um, yeah. That's also an important part of that discussion. Right. You can handle the prioritization, but I think it would, that is a good point in terms of if we have features, we might want to, you know, we can use built in, Jira's built in um, prioritization codes and have our own little rubric about, you know, how things get labeled critical or major uh, level or minor level um, enhancements, although we might want to even be more granular than that. So you're right, that, that could be another another issue. If we were blessed enough that we really had a great process in place to knock those out, <laughs> you know, or the right. effort to prioritization made, made sense. Right. So that will always be the challenge. And I would definitely encourage um, anyone who um, feels strongly or has any feedback at all around this JIRA to please log in and provide comments. Uh, because that if and when it does get some attention by developers, that will surely um, give them some good um, information to consider as they're developing. Okay, and Adam mentioned sympathize with the discussion re prioritization and resources. Talking with JW on the back channel about SAC 29007 and the fact that it's still awaiting review. <laughs> Adam, is that a JIRA that you would like us to, to talk about in an upcoming teaching and learning call? Okay, I assume the smiley face means yes. <laughs> so we can certainly do that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So I'll make a note of that um, so that we can talk about it in an upcoming. Call. Okay, so uh, now on our agenda, we are going to move on to upcoming meetings. I just want to make note that next week, um, Salwa and others are going to be talking about public relations effort, and that is a really important topic. Um, definitely want to be uh, attending that meeting if you can. and. On October 7th, it looks like um, Fred and Jesus from Blindside is going to be presenting on Big Blue Button. Uh, I guess some um, enhancements and, and where they are uh, with development of that 
product, which I'm going to be using right now. So that's right. So we have two sessions um, scheduled the next two sessions, but after that, we got nothing. Um, so what I'd like to do is call your attention to Etherpad. Let me um, paste that URL again into the chat. Uh, and if you could hop on over there for a minute and scroll down to look at the unscheduled topics, um, that could be a place to start with getting something scheduled uh, for meetings in October. Um, so we have the less wish list for Chuck Hedrick. Uh, we have, sorry, I moved away. Um, my favorite Jira. Yeah, wish list. So yeah. So. Uh, is that, Neil, is that you typing or is that somebody else? No, that's not, that's not me, no. So I wonder if, if that person is able to come on the mic and, and sort of um, explain what you mean there or in the chat. Looks like it might be Adam. Adam, do you have an active mic that you could? Okay, just on computer and listening only. So, um, okay, so you've made a comment of with my favorite Jira question mark could not just focus on lessons but others. So, not really exactly sure what you mean by that. So if you want to either elucidate further in Etherpad or the chat, um, that'd be great. But I'm going to move on in, in this list. And what we're really seeking to do here is not just identify these topics, but schedule some of them. So if any of you are working on any of these and can um, offer to to get on the schedule with these topics. Uh, and, and it is brainstorming as well, Adam, that's fine. Um, so uh, in particular, we're looking for people to step up and um, you know, facilitate that discussion or demo or um, uh, lead a discussion kind of thing on any topic. So yes, we're brainstorming for topics. We've also got Leap Phase 2 um, as a topic. I don't know where we are with that and if that's in a, a place that we could go ahead and schedule to talk about. Anybody on the Leap project um, able to chime in about that? Um, let's see. I, oh, Louise is online. Um, I, uh, my guess is, and Louisa can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, there you go. Leap is writing a summary report, so we're, uh, it's not ready to discuss the phase two yet because first they want to write a report on kind of the summary of phase one and then think about the best ways to, you know, to go forward. Okay. So hopefully in sometime in the future we can um, schedule that. Yeah. Uh, we've got the Sakai podcasts and polls tools. Um, somebody expressed interest in those, and I don't know if um, anybody is using those a lot and would want to do a demo or presentation around either of those tools. And feel free to chat or come on the mic as we're going through the list. I'm sorry, I missed that. Sorry. Oh, I said I have a couple of other ideas that you and I had discussed with Matt a while, but I'll jump in at the end kind of after you go through the list. Okay. Um, third party LTI tool demos. So, um, I, I went ahead and put a list of things that we're using at UVA. 
Panopto is a le lecture capture tool. Piazza does discussions and other types of class activities. Um, Blackboard Collaborate is a web conferencing similar to Big Blue Button. Uh, now, Comment is another tool that we're using at the University of Virginia. It's a uh, Matt. If you're if you have a mic, uh, you may want to give us all a brief idea of what that is. Um, what that tool does for chat. HMH Portfolio is another LTI tool demo that I think Brenda is typing into the list. Um, so that's a portfolio tool, I guess. Right, Brenda? OK. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, so now comment is a document annotation uh, tool. So I guess, Matt, you might not have a mic handy. Um, we've also got a documentation group update. I don't know, is that you, Wilma? Yes, um, I can, what, what date were we looking at again? Well, uh, we're looking at the, so October 14th or the 21st or the 28th. So we've yeah, got I'm not sure, days. I'm not sure if we'll have a whole lot to, Update in October. It might be better to go a little bit later. Um, okay. Just we haven't really been doing much since we've been waiting on code freeze before we can actually start documenting. So I can. Oh, sure, that makes sense. Yeah. So sometime after code freeze happens. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, use of groups with forums, uh, Louisa and others. This I pulled this off of a previous meeting notes, um, so I wasn't there. Uh, Louisa, would you be interested in picking up one of these in October to discuss that? Okay, do you have a, a date that you would prefer? We've got the 14th, the 21st, and the 28th of October. Do you have a preference? Or you can... Um, Just let us, you can let us know off. Not really these days are all fine. Would you mind if I plugged you in on the 14th then? Uh, that we at least have the next three meetings covered. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, okay, so Neil, did you want to chime in on on the other topics that we had talked about? Yeah, that was my. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, can you hear me? Sort of. You you break up a little oh. bit, but try again. Um, testing one, two, three. Okay. That's all good. Yep. All right, I'll speak slowly. Maybe that will help. Um, <laughs> you, me, and Matt, uh, just if you remember, uh, several women had some idea. Um, maybe, maybe I can throw the idea out to the group and see uh, mm. if there's interest. Sorry. So the probably the most important thing that you said was. Um, we got dead air. Maybe you could chat into the chat what you just said. <laughs> Sorry. I'll chat instead. Okay, thanks. And while, while Neil is doing that, let me uh, swing back to Brenda and ask if uh, Brenda, are there any dates in October, the, the 21st or the 28th, possibly, that 
would you guys be willing to do a demo of your HMH portfolio tool? Okay, thank you. And so, uh, can I put your name down for that? Okay. Um, Neil just chatted. One idea was use cases for discussion instead of um, being tool focused. Um, and two ideas around that were invited. Oh, okay, so that that's a that's one idea. Idea one is use cases for discussion instead of net tool focused. Love, love that idea. Um, and the second idea was invite a developer to present on what they are working on. Yes, I love that idea too. And the third idea was to invite all Aperio projects to present, including ones that are not obviously connected directly to teaching and learning, just so we get the full understanding of Aperio as a whole. And I think that is a, likewise an excellent idea excellent idea and I don't know where we should start. Um, I know there have been a lot of good conversations going on um, in email around uh, harmonizing tools and, and we've had some discussion on this group about that. Also in the lessons um, JIRA there have been there's been a lot of um, discussion around JIRA. I mean, sorry, round lessons as always. Um, so Neil is suggesting that we need to reach out to folks to make these happen. Brian Holiday on Verisite, that's a great suggestion. I know we did have a session on Verisite um, by Brian. I don't know if it was in this hall, but um, I'm pretty sure that that there was a webinar about it. Okay, Neil, that would be really helpful. Wilma will ask Brian about a Verisite session. Thank you, Wilma. And we rarely hear from the Aperio fellows. That's a great idea. Can we invite some of them over to talk? Yeah. Okay, Neil, thanks for doing that. Yeah, that is a really good idea. So right now we have, for October, we have just October 21st still open. And so next week we'll spend some time uh, trying to pinpoint maybe some of this outreach. We can get somebody for October 21st. So if you want to pitch it that way, Neil and, and, and or Wilma, um, that would be great. So any other suggestions around topics for future meetings? Well, thank you everyone for your really great contributions to that, um, to developing that list and for volunteering to do uh, future sessions. And Matt says he'd be happy to do something on now comment if people are interested. Great, thank you, Matt. Uh, why don't you, on the uh, schedule on the Confluence page, just go ahead and plug yourself in for a date that works for you. Thank you. Present it and they will come. <laughs> That's absolutely right. <laughs> we'll be there. All right, anybody have anything else they want to um, bring up? Lee Jen says, he hints at when and where next Aperio conference, just 
to um, maybe get some thoughts in on travel plans and fun activities. Um, I'll check with Ian on that. I think I know he was working really hard and the team was working really hard to find the next venue before they and nail that down before they made the announcement. So I'll check. I, th I think they were getting close, but I'll check with him and see. Great. Thank you. Anything else? Well, then, thanks again to Jolie for the really great demo on Warp Water. Jolie, that was really um, useful and interesting to see what you're doing with um, video content in Warp Wire. And uh, that, was, that was a good presentation. Thanks a lot. And uh, so we're, we're done a couple of minutes early. Uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, we'll see you next week uh, when we'll be talking about Sakai public relations efforts um, led by Saul and others. Hope you guys have a great day. You are currently the only person in this conference.